Hello YouTube, how are you? Been a while, hasn't it? Let's talk... Oh, wait, no. Let's talk about something different. Let's talk theatre. Welcome to Stagey Bookish. Hello YouTube, welcome back to Stagey Bookish. My name is Olivia and yes, you did hear right in that introduction. We're talking about something different today. Um, I've been inspired to do this video thanks to the glorious girl that is Heather over at Bookables. <laughs> who recently, to celebrate her nine year booktube anniversary, I know, she only looks like she's early 20s, my God, um, she did an, advi an advice video about growing your booktube channel. And one of the pieces of advice I took from that was about creating content that you are passionate about, even if it's not about books and kind of spreading the love for that on your channel. And I was like, that's really true because trust me, the name Stagey Bookish didn't just come because it sounded good. It combines the two things that I absolutely love and absolutely adore, and that is books and that is going to the theatre. Put them together, what do you got? Stage your bookish. Um, I don't know where I ever got the name from for this, but I've been a blogger for quite a while. Um, originally, my blog was called Thoughts of a Blue Eyed Girl because blue eyes. Um, and I was challenged to create that by an old teaching colleague of mine who was like, Oh my god, you go to the theatre shit so much, you should blog about it. So I did, um, and I was very blessed to see a lot of shows, it, you know, go and meet a lot of people. I was able to interview some West End musical theatre stars. I was so blessed with it. Unfortunately, life got in the way, cost got in the way, because, you know, it's all about that dollar dollar sometimes. Um, and, you know, personal life, unfortunately, got quite messy. That meant I had to slow down with the blog. And it upset me because I loved writing, but I wasn't going to the theatre as much as I used to. I was reading more, so I wanted to find a balance between the two. From that, Stagey Bookish was born. Um, so today, what I'm going to talk to you about is my love of theatre. This is going to be a really chilled out video. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my kind of history with going to the theatre, why I love it so much, and why I think it is something everyone should enjoy. Um, yeah, so let's make so I've been going to the theatre since I was really young. If any of the UK followers will know when I describe the word pantomimes, which is kind of a Christmas tradition here in the UK, and it's always something me and my family did together. I always loved going, but never did anything with it. With it, I was never that one to kind of be the actor front stage. I was in school shows, but I was in kind of on the ensembles, the background cast. I think the highest I ever, the highest rank I ever rose to in a school production was I was the mother of one of the brides in our production of Seven Brides of Seven Brothers. I had to dance and everything. It was quite a spectacle. Um, but really, my love of theatre came it came back, if you like, in two thousand and nine. I've always loved it, my parents have always loved it and taken me to things and told me about it, but really it was 2009 that the spark was lit. Um, and that was through me going to see the touring production at the time of We Will Rock It, which was the musical of Queen. Now I'd known we were going for ages and I was so excited to go. And it actually felt that I'd just finished my first year teaching after being qualified, I'd just completed my full year. And on the last day of term, the day we broke up for some holidays, we were going to see We Will Rock You on that night. So literally I'd like built up to it like nearly a year in advance. And I just remember that night, there was an energy in the air. I went with my mom and I went with my stepdad and who both knew Queen Music and loved it as well. And there was an energy in the air that night that I have never experienced up until that point before. And it was the magic of musical theatre. This was a cast that it included um, Alex Gomond, who I've seen in many things since, and the Queen, that is Brenda Edwards, who's going to be taking Sister Act on tour next year in the lead. And literally that was the spark that did it. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I went back to see that three times. It was let me think a year later when I went to London for the London's West End for the first time. Um, and then it all <laughs> some will say the rest is history, but it all went straight down from there. I always remember my first London trip. First show I ever saw in the West End was The Lion King. And trust me, if you've never seen that theatre fan, Disney fan or not, The Lion King is something that everyone should see in their lifetime. The way they do put that production together is beyond stunning. Go see it. I remember seeing Legally but I remember seeing Lion King. I then saw Legally Blonde, which was my first experience going to a stage door and meeting the cast. So we're talking Sheridan Smith, uh, Duncan James, Richard Fleishman and Alex Gomond as well. What else did I see that week? 
I saw, I remember seeing Wicked. I remember Wicked being the last show of the week. I can't remember what else I saw that week, but that was kind of my first experience of London's West End and the kind of passion that I had growing inside me for it. And little did I know that thanks to my parents, parents, well, my mum and my stepdad, there was a lot more of so I talked about the influence my mum and my stepdad had on me and that kind of is what took my love of theatre from that first West End trip into like the next level. So they had many moons ago, I, it's a standing memory I have, they went on kind of a weekend break that they booked through like a travel agent, it was like to go to London, stay over and see a show. I, didn't, I was like, oh okay bye, stand my hands for the weekend. They came back and they were like, oh we bought you a present and they presented me with this t-shirt and it was a completely black t-shirt apart from one thing and that was a white mask on the front and they had been to see the phantom of the opera in london it, there's all kinds of funny stories to go with it because my mum wasn't very well that trip and she doesn't remember seeing half of it but i suddenly gained a curiosity for what this show behind with the white mask is and you know i saw that it was 2004 was the film version i was like oh wow but then it came to it was 2011 uh, my second London trip my mum actually turned around to me and said because I, I wasn't sure of what show to go and see and I wanted to see different to what I'd seen before and she was like well why don't you go and see Phantom and I was like oh my god yeah that'd be so good oh um and so I did I booked I was about second or third row centre and if you've seen Phantom of the Opera in London you'll know kind of what view that gives you um what a thing that made me laugh the day that I went um I had a text message that morning from my mum going, I know today's Phantom Day, have the best time. Oh, and one piece of advice, duck. And I was like, it's Phantom of the Opera including ducks going quack quack now? And she, I said, what do you mean duck? She went, I'm not saying, you'll understand. Now I'm not going to spoil it, but if you've seen Phantom of the Opera, you will know. But from the moment that I walked into Her Majesty's Theatre London, which is on Haymarket, just off Piccadilly Circus, I was absolutely enraptured by that show. The theatre that was in was so perfect. As soon as you hit the auditorium, it's like, you, you just get lost in an absolute another world the way they the set it set is there and the way it opens and the music to this day there is nothing that gives me chills more in the best kind of way than the phantom of the opera overture i swear to swear now that orchestra the way the stage is set that happens and into that story i was completely swept away it took that one afternoon I think it was just short of two and a half hours the show to this day that was 2011 2019 i've seen phantom of the opera in london and on tour because i've seen it on a couple of tours when it's come to my hometown um i've seen phantom of the opera 40 times and people don't get it people go why the hell would you want to see the same show 40 times my answer is why not i fell in love with the story and i fell in love with the characters for me it's about going back to that story and seeing how people reinterpret the characters i have been blessed to see quite a number of phantoms i've been blessed to see such amazing cast members that i've seen in phantom of the opera and then i've been able to go on and support in other shows that is why i go back because there is nothing like the magic of that show in that theater and that will never ever stop me from going back. You do not need to convince me to go and see Phantom of the Opera because I will be the one convincing you to come with me. Once I deliver the love for Phantom, <coughs> excuse me, then I came from my parents, well, my mum and stepdad, then came Les Mis. So I went to see Phantom of the Opera for the very first time in summer 2011 in London, it, which was August 2011. The next month, uh, my mum and my stepdad had booked a weekend away and they told me, excuse me, that they were going to see um, a show called Les Miserables in London. The reason they wanted to go was because, number one, it was a show they'd never seen before. And I was like, yeah, OK, I'm here for that. But also at the time, there was a classical singer by the name of Alfie Bow, who my mum was a little bit in love with. I'm not going to lie, she got a bit of a, bit of a girl crush on Alfie Bow. Um, adored his voice and he had kind of come through doing the show's 25th anniversary celebrations at the O2 and now he's starring in the full stage show and his version of the one of the show's classic songs bring him home uh, kind of swept the musical world and she adored it so the chance came up to go and see him do the whole show she was like said to myself we're going and he was like die 
and I remember wanting to hear so much about it because I fell in love with Phantom and Les Mis was kind of the next one in London of the big classics, the big ones on my list that I wanted to see. And I remember the day, I still remember to this day, the day they came home, I didn't get a present this time, which is a bit joking I didn't get a present this time but I remember they came home and I just literally was like well how was it my stepdad's exact words and I remember ex his face I remember his exact words he went you know we told you phantoms the best thing we've ever seen and I yeah and he went this was this is better this was better and I was like oh and again that again spurred me on so it took from September 2011 I then went to see at our local concert hall in October 2011, I went to see an event called A Night with the Phantom, which was an evening with musical theatre star Ramin Karimlu, who was famous for playing the Phantom and other roles, but had been recently announced that he was due to go into Les Miserables from, I think it was November 2011. That night when I saw him at the concert hall, one of the songs he sang was Bring Him Home. I was gone. I was like that. I was like, oh my God. And he's also very pretty. It helps, it helps. I think I went home and the same day, same evening, no, it was the next morning. Next morning I got home and I booked tickets for January 2012 and it was the 21st of January 2012 to see Phantom for the second time in the afternoon, which had a brand new cast, so I was intrigued. Um, and then to see Lamez on the evening for the very first time. And it is stunning. It is like nothing you will ever see. Yes, it's epic. Yes, it's miserable. You know, parts of it are miserable by nature, but I defy anyone to not see Les Mis and leave feeling the biggest joy and feel fulfillment that you've ever felt in your life. To me, and this is for any stagey fans that are watching, to me, there is no better act one closing number at the moment in the West End than One Day More. It, it chills, it's uplifting, it just makes you want to go, oh yes! And it's just everything and brings that whole company together. Man, I have seen a lot of cast, different casts at Les Mis. I'm not quite as high on Les Mis as Phantom, I'm not over 40 yet, but I think I'm 35 plus. And every cast, no matter what, they sing that song and I'm, 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 I'm there. I'm just completely there for it. That's kind of how I test the cast at Les Mis. How solid is the cast? A test. the whole cast is tested on how good One Day More is the guy playing Jean Valjean is tested on how good his Bring Him Home is and the guy playing Javert is tested on how good his version of Stars is I, I'm silly, that's how I judge when I go in and see a new cast but again, Phantom and Lamies have opened up so many kind of ventures for me for me to not only to meet see different performers and then go on to see them in other productions but also to introduce me to this magical world that is musical theatre I mean, going, you know, Phantom and Les Mis will always be my top two all-time faves. But shows like, the, you know, if it wasn't for them, I would never have seen shows like Memphis the Musical, Once the Musical, um, Beautiful the Carol King Story. I'm just trying to think what else. Kinky Boots, Dream Girls, um, plays as well. I have had the honour of seeing some amazing people in plays. And I've, oh, I have seen Andrew Scott, who plays Moriarty in the BBC series Sherlock, play... Hamlet twice and I've met the guy twice and he's lovely. I have been in arm's reach of Benedict Cumberbatch playing Hamlet. I have seen Tom Hiddleston do Shakespeare. It's not necessarily all about the musicals but the magic you can experience in theatre. Oh and I've seen Harry Potter and the Cursed Child part one and two three times. I've got friends who haven't seen it once. I am so blessed and I am so lucky that I can go and I can shit have experienced this magic and for me the importance is not only about experiencing the magic but then going to share it with other people because that seeing other people experience theatre and experience the joy I feel is one of the reasons why I love it so so much so if we're talking about me sharing the joy with other people there's kind of a couple of stories that I remember in recent years of when that has happened and it's made me so emotional I'm like that's what it's meant to be about um a few years years ago oh gosh I was talking 2012 2013 I was teaching at the time and I got to take my top set English class on an enrichment trip I would 
to see Phantom of the Opera at our local theatre. Some of them, because of you know various reasons, had never been to the theatre. Some had never been to the theatre since they were like babies. Some of them, you know, they had never heard of Phantom of the Opera. And I was like, come, trust me, it will be magical. I will never forget their faces as they sat there and watched that show. We were at the back of the back of the back of the grand circle, and their faces were just made my life because they were so enraptured. They had that glint in their eyes of oh my god this is spectacular and i tell you what i've still got the some of the greeting some of the cards that though that class sent me to say thank you for allowing them to have this life experience and how they're going to go on and see more shows i did the same with the place i'm currently you know i work in education you know this the place i'm currently at we did a couple of trips in my first year where we took them to see nativity the musical you've seen nativity the christmas film it's the best thing ever they turned it into a musical it was camp it was glittery and it was the funniest thing i've ever seen again kids that had never been to the theater laughing and going miss when's the next trip i with that same group i was very blessed i got to take them to see phantom of the opera in london and that was just a day i took them around so we did a bit of sightseeing it was a really sunny day they were all exhausted because i walked the feet off them and i was like you joking this is nothing we got to go and they had the full experience of phantom of the opera london that i did on that first day in 2011 and they came out oh my god that was the best thing we've ever seen and it just i was like that is why i love theater because i can share those experiences and have that reaction the other kind of story i have one of my dearest friends and i um and if he's watching he'll know this story uh we went to london recently it was one of my highlights of my recent summer break um and we did a two show day we saw aladdin the musical he wanted to check out the cute boys um, and i also took him to see and it was my idea to go because originally we were just going to go down to london for the day and see just aladdin in the, in the afternoon and then come back but i saw advertisements for a show called the view upstairs uh, and i kind of on on the strength of the cast i wanted to see it so i took it to him and i was like well did you want to do a two show day and he was like yes um and i presented him with this kind of leaflet about the view upstairs and he was like oh my god we have to go and the view upstairs it's the european premiere it was the european premiere at the soho theater gorgeous little place never been there before and it tells the story of the people the kind of the the regulars who attended the upstairs lounge which was a essentially gay bar in new orleans i think it was in the 1960s 1960s 1970s but it was a place for people who felt persecuted in the outside world because they they identify as lesbian or they identified as gay to go and to just live their best lives and live their joy unfortunately and kind of part of the story of the musical is that there was an arson attack and a lot, pretty much everyone in the upstairs lounge that day died there was never anyone kind of charged for it there was you know people were saying well it was good because there's like one central character in the musical is a drag queen and it was like good because it would burn the dresses off of them and i tell you what it is a real story please go and look it up but this musical neither of us knew what was going in we, i knew it wasn't going to be an hour and 45 minutes which was thanks to the show i knew it was not going to be an hour and 45 minutes about fire what it was was an hour and 45 minutes about this group of people who were living their best lives living full of joy love togetherness friendship being their best selves and being in an environment where they could feel they could be their best selves the fire that happened is a part of the show but it is literally the last five minutes or so so if you I think by the time this video goes up it would have closed in and I'm just praying it comes back because I've never seen a show for me where I felt so uplifted and so devastated and broken in the same show I was sobbing I wasn't just crying I was inconsolable and so was my friend who came we were both crying our eyes out because it's it's such a joyous story but it's also such a harrowing story that no one knows about tangent back um the reason about the joy of theatre i shared with him we you know we both spoke about it after and we went and had some dinner and we just waxed lyrical about it because it was so good but it was actually we came back and i think it was a couple of days later on social media essentially he was going on about how we've gone to see this show this is the story how moved he was by it and how um he's going to use it in his teaching about you know teaching about the importance of identity and acceptance and I don't know what it was but for someone he's one of my dearest friends he's been through so much and he's always looked out for me ever since i've known him um for him to take so much from that story and be impacted so much it actually got me really teary but in the best kind of way because 
that's what theatre is supposed to do it's meant to make you have that reaction that gets you right in there and he'd had that reaction that's one of my dearest friends coming to a world that he doesn't go to the theatre he came to essentially into my world and I took him to this show and it impacted him and it's going to impact him for a long time that ladies and gentlemen is the magic of theatre yeah so this is just really kind of a uh, introduction to kind of my love of theatre and kind of where it came from I've mentioned a few of my favourite shows and here I've mentioned a recent show trust me look up the story of the view upstairs trust me if you hear about that coming anywhere near you in the UK in the US I think it's been in European premiere this year and it had off Broadway premiere last year so please look up soundtracks on Spotify um, it is the most beautiful story and the most heartbreaking story that needs to be told particularly in the world we live in today um, I'm hoping be interesting to see what you think of this i love going to the theatre and i want to talk more about it and perhaps this is my opportunity to do so balancing the bookish with the stagey maybe if possible doing something a bit of both um but yes i'd love to hear your thoughts on this video do you go to the theatre do you not have you been to the theatre recently have you seen any shows um do you have any questions about kind of my history of theatre i think i'm oh, very happy to give recommendations if anyone wants them but yes i hope you've enjoyed this video if you've like what i've done or you've liked previous videos please hit the thumbs up button down below or give me a subscribe hope to speak, see you all on future videos but for now this is olivia from stagey bookish signing out bye